Hi, my name is Victoria Euskaitis. I am a final year PhD student at the School of History Institute for Medieval Studies here at the University of Leeds. Today I will be presenting an anchorite at Chester the Street, visiting a medieval cell and museum. Anchorites, who could be men or women, were medieval religious recluses who lived in small cells attached to churches for the purpose of praying to and contemplating God. They would be walled up in these cells for the entirety of their lives so that they wouldn't be distracted by the secular world, something I think all of us can empathize with now that we've experienced COVID-19 quarantine. This wasn't a punishment in any way. Anchorites were considered the spiritual elite of the medieval world, and a potential anchorite had to undergo various tests and training before becoming enclosed. The community valued anchorites for their prayers and spiritual guidance, and they helped fund anchorites and provide necessities like food. Anchorites also spoke with their confessors regularly, usually though only through a small window. So my research focuses on the archaeology of anchorite cells. Most research about anchorites focuses on textual sources, such as anchorite rules like Ancrinoissa or church records about um, anchorites enclosed at specific churches. My research shows that there is no such thing as a model anchorite cell. Size and design varied considerably, although all cells had a squint, which I'll talk about shortly. Although I mainly focus on a case study of Shropshire sites in my thesis, I have looked at parish churches with anchoritic archaeology features all throughout England. So, what does all this have to do with Chester the Street? Chester Street Durham is a really unusual example of an anchorite cell because the entire cell survives. Very few complete cells still stand. The only others are at Compton, Surrey, and Much Wenlock, Shropshire. A cell attributed to Julian of Norwich is very popular with international and UK visitors, uh, but the cell is a reconstruction and doesn't have any original anchoritic archaeology features. The anchoritic archaeology at Chester Street includes a squint, which is a small window which allowed the anchorite to view the Eucharist uh, at the altar. And viewing the Eucharist was a really essential part of the anchorite's daily spiritual practice. This squint is unusual. The anchorite would lean into the squint recess and look through a passage set into the side of the recess, which offered a telescopic view of a side altar in the transept. You can still look through this squint today, as the photos that I'm about to show you will demonstrate. All of the photos used in this presentation are mine, unless they are otherwise cited. The cell is attached to the tower at the west end of the church and is a two-story structure. My archaeological analysis indicates that during the medieval period, when the space was used as an anchorite cell, it would have been just a two-room structure, but the cell has now been expanded into four rooms. These slides will show you exactly what I mean. The anchorite would probably have lived on the top floor where the squint is located, whereas the anchorite's servants lived on the bottom floor. That's right, anchorites often had a servant, and sometimes more than one, who would help with the day-to-day -day necessities like preparing food. Sometimes the servant would become the new resident of the cell after the original anchorite died, although this wasn't always the case. The following photos show a blocked doorway in the wall looking into the transept. This discrete entrance was most likely used by servants to enter and exit the cell. I'm sure you notice that the wall is also blank, except for a former roof line, demonstrating the original outline of the anchorite cell. This startlingly blank wall, devoid of any windows or other decoration, is very different from the open transept arch on the other side, it indicates that the cell was intentionally as closed off as possible to create a space suitable for a medieval anchorite. Two 14th century named male anchorites are recorded as residing at Chester the Street, but other anchorites, male or female, may have been enclosed before this. 
1548, the Chantry survey stated that no anchorites lived on site. After 1548, the cell housed destitute widows, then the curate. And during this period, I argue the cell was expanded into its current full-size scene today. Currently, the cell is used as a museum that houses local artifacts from a wide range of periods, from Anglo-Saxon to Roman to medieval. The reuse of this space highlights the way medieval architecture still shapes and informs our everyday experience today. It also demonstrates the dynamic nature of archaeology. This space has been used and reinterpreted in varying ways at different points throughout its history. The surviving anchorite squint invites us to engage with ideas about the interplay between text and material culture and the way preserving historical artifacts and features shapes our perception. For instance, here the squint was preserved, but so much other anchoritic archaeological uh, architecture has been obliterated by later renovations and changes. The squint also pushes us to consider what we can understand about past experience, and also what we can't. Although the church is currently restricting access due to COVID-19, I would encourage you to visit the parish church and Anchors House Museum at Chester Lestree in future. It's a fantastic site and one of the few places where you can still look through the anchorite squint. Another place you can do this is at Acton Bernal in Shropshire. This gives you a glimpse of what that lived experience would have been like. Thank you for listening and I look forward to any questions.